Chapter 21 Stay, Go, Lie Caden, Valerius said, feeling exposed somehow by the light in the young man's eyes. Valerius! Caden's voice was clipped. His gaze dropped between Valerius and Tilly. He patted his leg. Hey, Till, how about you come on over here? Valerius's nostrils flared. He put a hand on her shoulder as she looked at her brother strangely. Why? What? Caden's gaze snapped up to him again. Why should she come to you? Because. You padded your leg like she was a dog who would come here. Valerius raised an eyebrow. I didn't. Caden looked affronted. Tilly laughed. You totally did, but I don't mind because I'm totally going to use it against you. She rubbed her hands together evilly. Caden let out a wounded groan. Come on, Till. I was just trying to protect you. From, From what? From what? Valerius and Tilly asked that at the same time. Oh. Caden scuffed a foot on the floor. Well, Valerius is. I mean, I thought you would be intimidated. He can be intimidating. He looked up at Valerius through his lashes. You can be intimidating. Valerius tilted his head up. I can. Tilly giggled and took his left hand in both of hers. No, you're not. You're so cute. What? what? Now it was him and Caden saying that in unison. Tilly, though, continued to look up at Valerius fondly. I mean, you can be scary. You're big. You're bad. Yes, exactly. He agreed with her with a nod. But you're also handsome. Yes, he smiled. And kind. No, I... Yes, yes, you must be, because you're here to check on Caden and make sure he's okay. She said. You know how scared he is and confused, and you're going to make it okay. That had silence falling. He could feel Caden's eyes on him. Valerius frowned. He tried to speak, but nothing came out. He'd woken that morning, and his first thought had been about the boy. The annoying, innocent boy. He'd flown half the night watching Caden's house to make sure that nothing happened to him. Even in the few hours of sleep, he'd kept his ears and senses wide in case Caden let out a peep of fear or disquiet. He had debated with himself whether or not to just sweep in and take Caden back to the castle. In fact, he'd left his bed no less than six times to fly off to get the boy. He'd even considered simply camping out on the boy's floor. But all of those options had eventually been discarded because it would reveal Caden as the ninth dragon shifter. You came here to see if I'm okay? Caden actually gave him puppy eyes. Puppy eyes. I wished to ensure. Valerius paused and considered his words. You are very... Very? Caden's eyes now narrowed. Naive, he said. I'm not naive. You believe in the good in people, though I can assure you, people are not good. At best, they are neutral and... You've just been hanging out with the wrong sorts of people, if you think that. Caden interrupted. I've been hanging out with people in power. The same people you will have to deal with, eventually. And you are completely unprepared for what is to come. Valerius scrubbed his hands over his face. His eyes felt like they were filled with sand. He needed more sleep. Raziel had only cracked an eyelid to see the white dragon spirit, who had cooed again at them, and then settled back to sleep. Its big head rested on its large claws and its body was curled around itself. He truly needed sleep, but he couldn't sleep. Not when Caden was out in the world getting into trouble. Caden's arms were crossed over his chest. Not a good sign. He was learning the boy's ways. This body language was all affronted, but his temper was frayed from being tired, so he hadn't said it right. You think I am being unfair? Valerius guessed. Caden's chin lifted. Oh, another bad sign. You think I should trust your judgment? Valerius said the last word like it tasted bitter, because it did. Caden narrowed his eyes yet more. They were nearly slits now. A triply bad sign. You think I'm viewing the world through jaded eyes, and that you will change the world, Valerius said. Caden's head dropped. Yes, he was right. He knew it. The boy was planning something, something foolish. 
I don't think I can change the world. I don't. I know I'm not that smart or important or wise or whatever, but... Caden swallowed. But there are some things that I see that I know are wrong and maybe I could do something about. Such as? Now Valerius tried to cross his arms, but Tilly still had his left hand in her surprisingly firm grip. What do you want to do first, Caden? She asked. She clearly had full faith in her brother. That too was interesting in some ways. In his limited experience, brothers and sisters fought like cats and dogs. But while they might at other times be at one another's throats, he could see that Tilly believed in her brother to do good. Fitz, Fitz is jumping off of cliffs when he is unable to fly. Getting Rose a job, Caden said. But there was still a shiftiness to him which meant this wasn't all he intended. But Valerius was disturbed by it. Rose, you mean Marban's granddaughter who accompanied him on storming the castle last evening? Now he was arching an eyebrow. She's a good person. You need to give her a chance. Let me guess. She contacted you last night, didn't she? It was some apology for putting you in a bad position and wanting friendship, but knowing that she is unworthy of it. It went something like that, correct? Valerius's voice was clipped. The look of shock, then doubt on Caden's face told him that was exactly what had happened. Yeah, she reached out, and it was something like that, but it was real. Caden, he said softly. How could you know what's in her heart? How could I know what she said to you? Valerius's voice went soft. Caden's evident pain at the thought that Rose would be playing him was evident. I know, because this is all Marman. It stinks of him. He knows that you like the girl. He knows that you have a good heart. You think by befriending her that you can save her. Not save her. She will save herself. I just want to give her a chance. She hasn't had that. She was rejected by her family, and since she was in the below in the first place, she didn't have much more than them. Caden got out. I've asked Wally to give her a job. Valerius pinched the top of his nose. So she could be here with you. You don't have to worry, King Valerius. Caden doesn't like girls like that. He's gay. Tilly suddenly piped up. Both of them looked at her in shock. Caden looked rather horrified. Tilly, why are you? Valerius cried at the same time. I'm not jealous. Both Caden and Tilly looked at him. So did the white dragon spirit who tilted its head and blinked those large eyes at him curiously. What I meant to say was that my concern about Rose is not because I fear that Caden may develop or has developed romantic feelings for her. He frowned. Tilly was giving him a raised eyebrow as if she didn't believe a word he was saying. I just mean that she will attempt, through friendship, to gain Caden's sympathy and to lead him to do things that benefit Marban. I know Marban is a bad guy. Caden groused. But Rose isn't. I really think if she's given a chance that she'll get free of him. But even if she isn't, and she's working for Marban, I have my own mind— it's not like she can brainwash me into doing something for Marban. That's the thing about Marban. He's very intelligent. Not just intelligent, so much more than that. He is very old and cunning, and he uses people with good intentions and good hearts. He eats them whole, Valerius said quietly. Caden did not look hurt or alarmed any longer, at least not for himself. He was studying Valerius. You're really worried about me. I told you, he's soft in the center. Tilly poked Valerius's armored stomach. She poked it a few more times. Well, not literally. You're really hard, like hard. Tilly, stop poking him. Caden hissed. I'm sorry, it's a little addicting. He's all muscle. She muttered and crossed her arms over her chest. A little bit of a 13-year-old peak. She then rolled her eyes at her brother, confirming this. It is understandable. I have a very impressive physique, Valeria said, offering her a life raft. It doesn't matter how good looking you are. She shouldn't be touching you without permission. I mean, you're the king and... You think Valerius is good looking? Tilly brightened. I do not want to feed his massive ego. But yes, of course, wouldn't. Caden blushed. 
Do you think Caden is good-looking, King Valerius? Tilly gazed up at him with that pre-teen way that made him want to shuffle his feet, even though he was quite a few years too old to be doing that. He is adequate, Valerius answered. Adequate? Caden squawked. You are fine-looking, Caden. That's hardly important, is it? I enjoy you just fine, but not because of your looks. Valerius gritted his teeth as his answer made him sound like he was lying. Tilly clearly thought he was lying. She had one hand up to her mouth to hide her grin. You enjoy me. Caden's eyebrows rose. That's an improvement. I annoyed you before and you wanted me to leave your territory. What? Tilly looked like someone had sent an arrow through her heart. Her eyes were huge and threatening to fill with tears. That was before. Valerius found himself quickly saying, Before? So now that you know, Caden, you don't want that, right? How did Tilly suddenly have puppy eyes too? Caden stepped towards him. The white dragon spirit was making a new purring sound, leaning towards him too. Raziel's eyelids cracked open. It started to purr now too before abruptly realizing what it was doing and stopping it. Raziel's head rose up from its claws, and it looked bewildered. Everything is fine, Raziel. What? The territory? White dragon spirit? Go back to sleep. I am handling things, Valerius told it. Raziel yawned, blinked sleepily, and laid back down, asleep again in seconds. Valerius wished he could join it. This conversation had completely gotten out of hand. She only would have been laughing into her hand, just like Tilly was doing in hers earlier. Tell me you want me to stay, Caden said. He was gazing into Valerius's face. You told me you are not leaving, Valerius said. No, tell me that you want me to stay, Caden insisted. If that's what you really feel. I... You don't want me to stay? Do you want me to leave? Caden stepped closer. There was suddenly not enough room in this very large warehouse. It felt very, very small. He shifted from foot to foot. You are staying, no matter what I say, so why does it matter if I want you to remain? Valerius asked and shifted some more. Caden looked down and then backed away. I suppose that's better than what you were saying before. So, small steps. I'll accept that. There are so many completed stories in the archive that will probably never come out as books. I just don't have the time to edit, revise, and publish them all, especially when you consider that I've been writing my own original gay romantic stories since 2010. It is a lot of material. But that doesn't mean these stories are lost and gone forever. You can read all my web novels, even the earliest ones, on my serial subscription site, WraithRain.com. Join for a month or two, because it's an all-you-can-read buffet. If you're worried about recurring fees, it's very easy to cancel. So you can sign up and cancel on the same day as you please. We know this is important, especially for students who often eliminate any distractions during exam time. The link to the subscription form is in the notes. Valerius cleared his throat. He found he could not say a word. Thankfully, Caden didn't look distressed, or at least too distressed. Tilly was frowning deeply. She kept looking between him and her brother. Caden, though, had gone to a shelf and grabbed a large feather duster. He handed it to Tilly. I think Wally wants to get his work out of you, he said to her with a grin. She took it and waggled it in his face while she scrunched up her own. You just want to talk to King Valerius alone. I guess I'll allow it. After all, he and I already had a talk. Yeah, about that. What did you talk about? Caden asked. She bopped his nose with the feather duster as she answered, None of your business, big brother. She then sashayed out of the back room and into the front. Valeria saw that there were already several tourists perusing the wares, most especially the black dragon plushies, just as the door closed behind Tilly. One of those tourists asked as she held up the black dragon plushie. Do you have a white one? Valeria suppressed a sigh. The silence fell again. The dusty scent of the warehouse rose up. 
and it reminded him of an old, abandoned city with lots of strange antiquities. The antiquities were tacky tchotchkes, but he could imagine people in a future age trying to puzzle out their current one from looking at them. The shifters would be in that future age, of course. He would be there. Caden would be there. And they could tell those future explorers about this time, but they would likely remain silent as he did now about the past. If one thought too deeply about the past, one was crushed by it. But Caden was making him consider things from the far reaches of his life. It was yet another thing that disturbed him about the young man. Or maybe it was yet another disturbing thing about the young man overall. You were flying over my house a lot last night, Caden said quietly. Since you would not stay in the castle, and trouble seems to follow you, I thought it was wise. Valerius answered. You were worried about me. Not necessarily. I was worried about the citizens of Reach. With you around, things are never calm, Valerius said. But they were calm, weren't they? The young man leaned against a metal shelving unit, arms and legs crossed, all negligent limbs and easy sensuality, even though Caden had no idea how he looked. That was one night. After a day of insanity, I might add. A few hours of quiet, and you act as if that should prove something. He shook his head, his long hair rustling along his shoulders. Yeah, well, most of that insanity was caused by other people. I just tried to help. Caden shrugged. And you don't think you'll try to help again? Valerius lifted an eyebrow. He did that often with Caden. Especially now, when you actually have abilities to help others. Don't you know yourself at all? I've known you for less than 24 hours, and I am well aware that you will try to sweep in and save the day any minute now. You'll reveal yourself and... You think that's going to happen anyways? Caden scowled. It was a pretty mouth to scowl like that. He found he wanted to reach over and tease the corners of those plush lips upwards. You coming here in your armor and not real people clothes is so not helping. Not real people clothes? Yeah, like jeans and t-shirts or even a suit. Do you ever wear that stuff? Caden actually looked interested. Valerius frowned. No, why would I? Because everyone else does. Only you dress like some RPG character. Caden muttered. RPG. I dress like this. Because it is befitting of my rank and... Being half naked with straps of leather is befitting of your rank? Caden's mouth was suspiciously twitching up at the corners into that smile he'd so wanted earlier. I would prefer to wear nothing at all. But the mores of this time require me to. The humans view us as animals at best and monsters at worst. So being dressed, showing modesty in their limited understanding is a necessary evil. He snarled and sliced a hand through the air. Shioni and he had had this conversation before. She loved clothes. Not that she didn't love being naked, too, but she loved the spectacle of it. She often said that clothes allowed her to be many different people, while her bare skin allowed her to be only one. That was why Valerius mostly kept to the simplest of clothing like leather and silk that was most like his scaly form or his naked human one. I can't imagine being comfortable being naked around people. Caden bit his lower lip as he contemplated it. You will realize what a nuisance clothing is when you are shifting more often. You will not feel the heat or cold any longer as you did when you were human, so you will not need clothing to protect you. Valerius explained. It is just for ornamentation or fitting in now. Oh, yeah. I guess I can see that now. Caden bit harder on his lower lip, his brow furrowing. Speaking of shifting, you will need to soon, Valerius said. He clenched his jaw. This was stepping into the realm of teaching. But if Caden were to truly remain in his territory, he needed to learn to control himself. Caden frowned. How soon? The white dragon spirit gets that we need to be on the down low for a while. Once a day, minimally, Valerius said. That had Caden's eyes widening hugely. Once a day? Iolair didn't mention that. Why didn't you mention that? Iolair, Raziel's sleepy mind repeated. Beautiful, disastrous, 
I owe her. Caden is not a disaster. He will not lead others to their deaths, he said to Razael. But the black dragon spirit was already asleep, probably because it wants to please you. It is as agreeable as you are, even when it is to its detriment, Valerius guessed, as the white dragon spirit's head lowered. Well, there's no way I can get somewhere where no one will see me or us when we ship today. I have work, and even if Wally would let me off... He will, or I will twist his little pink ears. Hey, yeah, of course he would, but Rose is coming at noon, so I have to be here to have lunch with her and show her the ropes if Wally hires her, and then tonight... A flash of guilt went through Caden's blue eyes. Then, tonight... Valerius prompted, his voice dropping and his eyes narrowing with suspicion. Nothing. I just have stuff I have to do, he said with a defensive slouch of his shoulders. He stuffed his hands into his pockets. Is it something more important than the health of the white dragon spirit? Valerius gave Caden a cold look. What? No! I mean, I, I mean, yes. I mean, it's important, and I can't change it, because others are in charge of it, and... Never you mind. There's just something I have to do, and there's just no way I can do both things. He said angrily, but then looked up with a worried frown as he asked, It won't hurt the white dragon spirit if I don't shift just for today, right? I mean, I will there will be okay. What time will you be done with this important activity this evening? Valerius questioned. I'm not sure. Caden was biting that lower, tempting lip of his. Well, when you are finished, you will contact me on this. He pulled out a new cell phone that was encrypted. My number is programmed into this. And here is a new wallet, complete with ID, bank card, everything that you lost that wasn't sentimental. Caden took them from him slowly. A grin crossed the boy's beautiful face. Oh man, this is awesome. I really thought I'd have to spend like a day or more getting all of this taken care of. How did you... I am the king of kings, Caden. Do you think getting you a duplicate ID is a problem for me? Caden blushed. He carefully put the phone in his front pocket and the wallet in his back one. Well, I guess that is kind of stupid of me. I just... thank you. It takes a load off. Yes, I'm sure. But you do realize that if you had gone to get these things replaced, you might have been identified. The reporters are staking out the DMVs. Someone might have recognized you from last night as well. Valerius let that hang. The truth was that he was already worried about what the television crews had reported live on air before his people had shut it down and taken all evidence of the march on the castle. Someone would recognize Caden eventually, sooner or later. Well, I do appreciate it anyways. Caden told him with one of those shy smiles that had him feeling strangely warm inside. The door to the back suddenly burst open and Wally came in with a black balloon animal on his head. He immediately greeted Valerius. Tilly just told me you were here. Why didn't you come out and mention it, Caden? Uh, I didn't know you'd want to talk to him. Caden said. Are you crazy? Now that I've got him here, I can have him sign some of the Black Dragon merch. Wally enthused. Caden snorted. Valerius scowled. What is that on your head? What? This? Oh, <laughs> Black Dragon balloon hats. The kiddies love them. Five dollars a pop. They're great sellers. A brilliant gleam appeared in the rat shifter's eyes. You know what would be great for sales? No. Valerius said, meaning no to whatever he was going to suggest. But Wally took that as him just not knowing the answer. Now I know you can't really be in the store today because of the kid here and all, but you could put on some of the merchandise and we'll take pictures. Wally! Caden was laughing so hard and yet looking leerily at Valerius as if he might explode in dragon fury any minute now. But it would be great and... Wally stopped speaking, as Valeria simply leaned forward and looked into his eyes without blinking. Wally swallowed. Okay, I can see that you're not in the mood for modeling, but uh, what about those autographs? He pulled out a pen and smiled encouragingly at Valerius. Valerius merely straightened and turned to Caden. You will call me 
After you are done with this thing you have this evening, I will fly you to a deserted spot, and you will shift. Valerius told Caden. Right, cool, that sounds good. Caden's head bobbed up and down like a marionette. The relieved scent flowing off of him was almost overwhelming. Caden was definitely going to be up to no good tonight, but Valerius would be there. He wasn't going to wait on any call. He would follow the young man, but he pretended that he believed this ridiculously poor lie. He then turned on his heel and headed towards the back entrance of the warehouse. He ignored the ridiculous, overwhelming desire to stay. When you buy a book or join my membership, it's not only a way to keep the lights on and pay my staff. Your money is proof that what I do is truly valuable to you, and I've never lost sight of that. I'm always honored that you choose to spend your time, attention, and money with Wraith Rain instead of the thousands of other choices you have, including just doing nothing. There are authors who are killing it on Amazon, but that's not, well, for me. I prefer to be able to see your name when you subscribe or make a purchase, and I love to see your comments both on YouTube and at the end of chapters. We have a real community, and that's what I've always wanted. My small team and I will continue to do the best we can to entertain you with tales of heroism, romance, justice, and adventure. Thank you so much for your support. <laughs>